and play action. And like I said, we tried to get the we tried to get the running game going, but I think in order to get a running game going, I don't like running east and west so much. You know what I'm saying? If you want to open up the running game, get those running backs out in space. You know, we love doing all this motion. Get the running backs out in the flat. Stretch those wide. Stretch those linebackers out. Get them tired. Keep them guessing. Keep them thinking. You know, we did throw one. We attempted a screen, but it was an obvious screen. It was, it was, I mean, I knew a screen was coming. You know what I'm saying? Because of down and distance. So, you know, sometimes, and I'm, I'm sorry if I'm trying to act like I sound like I know what I'm talking about, but you like, like you, I watch a lot of football. And right. We're just giving our opinions. It's just all opinions. In my opinion, you have to earn that play action. A play action is a payoff. You earn it by getting positive yards in the run. When you keep getting po- – if you're not getting positive yards in the run, you know what I do? I stretch the field and pass to run. Pass to run. You know what I'm saying? If they not, if you line up in a formation where you know you got double tight or, or one tight and, you know, uh, they're, not, they're not trying to let us – they're playing – Umbrella football. Keep everything in front of you. Come downhill every play. Period. You know what I'm saying? So um, you got to be able to see that, and you got to be able to adjust to it. And I think that open and drive, the type of plays that were called, and I don't know why, but we seem to go. And I don't believe the uh, we 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 they were adjusting to where we had to get out of that rhythm. I think that was a rhythm we could have continued to do. You know what I'm saying? And just kept yeah. spreading the ball around, mixing the ball around. You know, I don't like when we get in the red zone. And, I mean, I, I appreciated the day. We got in the red zone. We tried to run the ball a lot, and I appreciated that. But, I, you know, there was times where, you know, he'd get a little cute, you know. And, and um, you know, I think uh, – they just got to figure it out. It, and, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to say the coaching got to figure it out because, hey, they recruited those players. Well, some of those players, they got to coach those guys up. You know, they got to okay, coach. So let, me, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. It, what's one thing, what's the most important thing we need to work, with, work on on the offensive side of the ball? Ooh, that's so hard. Well, I can tell you this. Jaron's decision making. I have to say Jaron's decision making. So so you're putting Jaron's decision making over the offensive line play? There's nothing we can do with the players that we have on the offensive line. So no matter what, we can adjust to that. Do you know how fast that North Carolina um um quarterback was getting the ball out of his hands when we played them? He didn't allow our DNs to pin their ears back. He got the ball out of his hands so quick to where, you know, guys were still coming out of their breaks, receivers were still coming out of their breaks, and the ball was coming. So, but so... I, I'll say, wait, hold on a minute. I'll say this again, though. That uh, They were running a quick hike it and then throw it. Eno's got my man doing a seven-step, five-step drop. We have, to, we have to adjust based on the fact that we don't have a line combination apparently substantial enough to, to, to for that, so if we if we it, it's either one or the other, either we don't have a line or Jaron's holding the ball too long. So it's gotta it's gotta be one or the other. So if if Jaron don't hold the ball too long, that means more balls are gonna get out. That safety, he held the ball too long. Not the first one, the second one. The Let first, me ask you. he got hit. Uh, uh, that was a stunt. A stunt. Uh, um. Moved by seventy one on a defense, and Jaron didn't even see him coming. He was stepping into his throw. But the second one, you gotta know, man. You're right there. You, you, you gotta have that third eye open in that in that situation. That's the quarterback thing. That's the what, quarterback. What would you do if there was a breaking news? Breaking news. Manny Diaz has has started has decided to start Nikosi Perry at quarterback against Virginia Tech. How would you feel? What would be your reaction? 
Um, my reaction would be like, what's the difference? Because if we don't have a quarterback, and they weren't, if they weren't, I mean, if we don't have a uh, our old line, and if they weren't comfortable enough with Nikosi then, then why are they putting them in now? And I think I know why. And if they do do that, it's because they know he will take risks. Jaron had opportunities okay. to run straight, and it looked like he was just waiting, 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 waiting. Instead of taking what the defense was giving him, you can take the, what the defense gives you immediately, get positive yards on your feet, and, and, and slide. You, 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 Enos will not penalize you for that. I guarantee it. If they give you the they, – they part the Red Sea, and, and, and you're sitting back there, and they waiting on you to throw it, take off. What's the worst that's going to happen? I mean, I, 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 what I, what I, what I, what I, what I praise Jaron about um, through the spring and through the um, fall, the fact that he keeps, he he stands in and and, and he's patient. And I said that with Tate's style, if he just takes off, you know, so many snaps. Maybe we may have some type of frustration, depending on the type of diva that's in our receivers or in you know whatever. But but Jaron gives us uh, uh, that patience to where he can make some 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 bigger plays because he's more patient as far as throwing the ball. Now there's a there's a, there's a plus in a, there's a good and a bad in that. Can you live with the fact that he still didn't throw an interception? But we're we're what are we two and two, and, two we, and two. we don't and we don't look good at all. We're still getting negative yards. We're still getting sacks. We're still getting. We got a safety today. Penalties, penalties. We're still getting penalties. So our, our so can we live with that and say, hey, we're young, we're growing through it, or should we say, hey, um, let's take a risk on our two risks. Takers, listen, Tate, Tate's a winner. I give him that. He never lost a game. So are you willing to take a risk on a risk taker? Or do you like the numbers, the stat line of your quarterback outside of the rushing? Because the rushing will always be in a negative because he will take some sacks. But outside of that, you're okay with the completion percentage and the zero interceptions? And the mediocre, you know, about 250 to 270, two touchdowns, uh, no interceptions, but 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 we we lose, we barely lose, or we barely win. Are you willing to live with that for a season? I don't know. I don't know. And, well, and, I think I think that? you listen to listen to what listening to what the coaches said. They said. And I, I want to make it clear. I don't think there is a quarterback competition. Jaren's the quarterback. I mean, this is Jaren's team. We're riding with Jaren. I do believe that. But what they say from the start, we want a quarterback that's not going to um, burn the house down. And that is what Jaren is. Jaren gets. Jaren is an accurate thrower, uh, short to intermediate, and he doesn't burn the house down. No turnovers yet. I think he's done a good job. Can he improve? Yes. But but that's what the coaches have said they wanted, though. So my question to you would be this. You're a Miami fan. I'm a Miami fan. And I knew this day was, this question would come up. Um, can you – if we win, no matter how ugly it is, can you live with the no turnovers? Because obviously, yeah, turnovers will hurt us. All well, it depends, can, though. Can, it, can I handle us beating Virginia ugly? Yes. No, Can I handle no. us beating Central Michigan yeah. ugly? You can't set the variables to this. It's either or. <laughs> you can't. Listen, we just beat. I'm going to tell you why. We just beat, uh, what's the name? Uh, Bethune Cookman, right? 63 nothing, right? Right. Right. All was wrong. Do you know what I had to read online? What? Oh, Jared's completion percentage. Um, is great, and, you know, he's doing this, he's doing that, and he's protecting the ball. And there's a ton of fans saying, but it was Bethune-Cookman, but it was this, it was that. You know, and then they're going off of the fact that 
you know, Trevor Lawrence is three and zero, and these guys are three and zero, and we lose it. You know, they're still going back to those losses. So it's either you win the game, no matter what your stats are, because what they're saying is the stats don't matter. The completion percentage don't matter. The fact that he didn't get any interceptions don't matter. We lost against Florida and North Carolina. So they're salty, and they're saying that those stats don't matter. We, we, got, we need to be winners. So that's my question. If we're winning, but barely, are we still going to, are we going to be okay with that? Or are we still going to complain about the offense? And, and the development and, and this and that. I think we're damned if we do, and we're damned if we don't. Yeah, yeah. If 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 you throw Tate out there, if you throw Nikosi out there, we're going to be having this same subject, but it's going to be about a different aspect. So I, I see I see what you're saying. Let's let's jump on over to the defensive side of the ball because mm-hmm. we we did have four turnovers, but – we just seem to can't get off the field on third downs. What are your thoughts on the defense and how they played? Um, one thing about our defense, and I think they play very hard. You know, they play hard. But I think we're just not deep enough with the type of talent we need. We need sound guys, disciplined guys. Now, listen, Clemson's defense didn't ha- always have household names, but they had discipline. You know, every time we're going out here and we're facing these teams, we're beating ourselves with with, with certain. Now, I'm not going to lie. There were some questionable calls today on our defense. But for the most part, you got to be disciplined. And I think that there, you know, I, I, you, I, I think, yeah, you want them to play free and play fast and play aggressive and have fun. But damn, like we're there's no freaking way the Chippewas should have gotten a damn touchdown, a field goal, anything on us. Period. I'm sorry. It's my opinion. You know what I'm saying? I don't what care. A- we we need to we need to get deeper. I think at the linebacker position, we're definitely running thin. Avery Huff. I mean, what what does my thing is? What does us having depth against Central Michigan have to do with the? I don't understand what that has to do because I mean, we we have better athletes than them, but it just seems like it's. I I I just feel like we're not on third downs. We're not getting to the quarterback, and they're catching the ball right in front of our safeties. We're not breaking on the ball, and I, I agree with the. There was times where we weren't disciplined. A lot of penalties again. Alright. Alright. Hold on one second. Um hey, get 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 my blue chair from Buddy son. Put it back in the truck. Put it in your truck? Yeah. Alright. Close my door, X. Sorry about that. Close my door for me, thanks. Sorry about that. So you was talking about um repeat what your question was? I'm sorry. So when you look at the um I think the discipline with us getting the penalties and on third down, we're not getting to the quarterback. And uh, it seems like our safeties aren't breaking on the ball. It seems like they always catch it. Then we come up and make the tackle. Yeah. I don't like that. That brings me back to Al Golden's era. And that's a, that's the era I hate to relive when we, when we basically, you know, was playing all kind of stupid, um, cover threes and bailouts and all this stupid stuff with our safeties. And um, I think we need to keep our state. Now, now one thing, okay, I understand. They don't want to give up um, a big play, but you got to you gotta make those guys earn. You got to make um, Central Michigan earn those. You know what I'm saying? You, you know, um, I, I think we got some issues, man. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm, I'm sorry. We got some issues. And it may be inexperienced, but I think we got some mismatch issues that a lot of teams are going to look to exploit with our players. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, Bandy on the outside, when he plays in the slot, I like it. When he plays on the outside, they pick on him. And they're going to keep picking on him because he's uber aggressive and he has to be. You know what I'm saying? And 
I think what Blake Baker may be trying to do is trying to um, just give those corners and our linebackers pass support to to the point where um, just keep some type of blanket coverage to make sure that um, if somebody's assignment is messed up, you know, they're not going to get beat. The safeties are not going to get beat. You know, so I, I don't, I can't read the mind, their minds, but I think we got talent. But I, I, I still think that we don't have that ball hawk, that that ball hawk vibe coming from our safeties that we need. Um, and that makes a difference. Now, Bubba Bolden is a ball hawk, but I don't know what he's going to look like. You know, in a game scenario, in a game situation, I don't even know. You know when he's going to get – I know when he's going to be cleared to play, but I don't know when he's going to get in the game to see what he has to offer. I think Amari Carter is flying around. I think Gervin Hall is flying around, but we still see that they got a ways to go before we can start comparing them to any other safeties uh, that we had. You know, they got a ways to go, and I think they're going through growing pains right now, unfortunately with the wrong type of, with the wrong type of teams. But if you win – and you and, and you still can learn something, I'll take it. But if we, if, right. we if, if you're getting beat and we losing, man, that's that's not a good that's not a good thing. All right, so let's let's talk about special teams here. Um, we got the good and the bad. The good is Lewis Headley have been has been great punning. Yeah. The bad is Bubble Baxter, although it did not count, he still yeah. missed the field goal today. Your thoughts on both of those guys? Um, Lewis Headley and our defense owes Lewis Headley a, a a beer because you know we gave up way too many first downs. They murdered us the first downs. I don't know if you know that today. Um, we gave up way too many first downs. Lewis Headley had us a great position, uh, field position with our defense on the field, and you know he bailed us out of a lot of crap. And um, we're starting to see him get comfortable with that rugby-style punt. Um, hey, it is what it is. The fans love it. Um, he's placing it in nice places. And our guys, this is the second week in a row we got a punt within the uh, five. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I like I like where we're going with him. Bubba Baxter, hey, man, listen. I literally look at this kid like I'm, I'm probably – I probably end up being like five feet away from this kid. Um, nice kid, but I think I think mentally, it's a, he it, it, he's 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 t- <laughs> he's torturing himself mentally, man. You can look in his eyes. His eyes is like, oh God, please get a first down. Please get a first down. He don't want no parts of that uh, of field goal. I'm being real with you. He don't want no parts of field goals. Um, I think he's starting to, you know, defeat himself mentally. Um, he may need to see a psychologist. A lot of kickers do do that type of stuff. And, and um, hopefully he can get some help because, like Manny Diaz said, we all need him for other kicks. <laughs> you know, we're going right. to need him. And I'm kind of scared to go to Dope Campbell. I'm sorry, but, you know, listen, um, they look like trash. But they they're at least you know you know the last couple weeks you know they're 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 starting to look like they're they want to win they I see a lot more fire in their game with those players getting fired up and you know poor little Bubba Baxter you know that's the last guy one out there with the game on the line but um we there's nothing we can do about it he's gonna have to fight through it and um, when it's number call man you're gonna have to Line it up and do what he need to do. You know, I heard we got another young uh, kicker on the roster, but you don't want to kick a controversy. That's the last thing you want unless they know that kid's lights out. If that young kicker's lights out, hey, let's do it. If not, then, you know, because you don't want – if you get it – number one, if his confidence completely shot, then we, 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 we're we done with Bubba back. That's it. Put him on the shelf. Mm-hmm. You, you start a kicker controversy, his confidence may be completely shot. 
You know what I'm saying? So let's rally around them. And, and you know, we, we won the day. Thank God it wasn't a, you know, a, 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 a must kick. You know what I'm saying? So we'll see what happens. All right, my man. Well, hey, I appreciate you doing this for me, man. We're going to try to have these talks um, after every game or, uh, you know, Sunday mornings. So we'll keep giving it to the people. I appreciate it, Anthony. All right, man. Um, if you guys want in-game updates, um, always follow us on Caneville 305. You know, um, we're going to start tweeting live during the game, post up some photos from the sideline, some, you know, small video clips or whatever. And uh, we're just trying to start start a little something different with Caneville um, to give you guys some, some exclusive access from our perspective where we at. All right, that's my guy, Anthony, the Anthony, the insider working with Canesville football on the sidelines at practice everywhere. Anthony, I appreciate it, brother. All right, man, man. Talk to you later.